This video is brought to you by Naive. How do you like the new setup? It's not a DaVinci Resolve day, so I figured this is a perfect time to experiment with maybe filming in a new location. So, you know, welcome to my living room. I've been here before, but it's always kind of been a run and gun. I didn't really set up a shot per se. I just kind of put the mic on the camera and on the switch pod and you get the idea. Today, we've got we've got a full setup I and mean, we've got the camera, we've got the light with the softbox, we've, we've got the microphone right up here. I actually found one of my old, one of my old microphone stands from when I was a, in a band and it's got a, I just put the boom arm from my little tabletop boom on there and look at that, perfect, I got a boom stand. The inspiration for this video came from watching YouTube actually. I have noticed that a lot of people have been putting out videos about how they make their videos, but I feel like it's missing some information. A lot of the videos that I'm, watching don't really go through the entire process. They show you how they set up their equipment, they show you their lighting, their camera settings and all that, but there's other stuff. Making videos is a lot more than just setting up equipment, filming something, and then posting it on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. There's a lot of stuff in the process. So I thought today, in keeping with my mission of helping you make better videos, I would actually walk you through the entire process of making a video. Everything from coming up with the idea to promoting it after it's live and public for everybody to see. So with that being said, hi, my name's Jay. I'm a filmmaker, YouTuber, and freelance video editor, and let's start making better videos. Let's start from the very beginning. Every video starts with an idea, and for people who are trying to post consistently on YouTube, sometimes coming up with an idea is the hardest part of the video creation process. Now, I've come up with a few different ways that I stay inspired. One of the ways is by watching movies. I'll look for color grades or transitions or effects, and I'll be like, wow, how do I do that? And then I'll learn how to do that, and then I'll teach you how to do that. And that's kind of what happens. Sometimes there's just something going on that I really want to share, like maybe getting a new office set up or filming a short film, or maybe I'm going to meet up with some other YouTubers and I just want to film that. And sometimes, especially for the DaVinci Resolve tutorials, one of my favorite things to do is to actually watch Premiere Pro tutorials and I'll learn how to do what they're teaching, but you know, in DaVinci Resolve, and then I'll turn around and I'll make a video on it. There's a lot of people out there that say you should create more than you consume. And I don't wholeheartedly believe that. I don't believe that creativity is born in a vacuum. I feel like we need to do stuff to stay inspired. So if consuming content, if watching YouTube videos, watching movies, watching shows helps inspire you to go out and make stuff, then by all means, consume that content. Just don't forget to create something afterwards. Once I've come up with an idea, the first thing I do is put it in the notes app in my phone. I use Google Keep because it syncs across all my devices, which is really nice. And I just, I put it in there. It doesn't even always have a title that comes later, but I'll just put the idea in my phone and I'm good to go. So today we are planning a video. I got a video idea for showing people how to go from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve for color grading and then back to Premiere Pro to finalize everything, hoping to bring maybe a, a little bit more of a diverse audience to my channel. And in order to do that, there's some planning that has to be done. So we're gonna jump into TubeBuddy SEO Studio, which is a new feature for the paid SEO plans that I'm really enjoying. I also use Morning Fame, but this is just something that I'm testing out, but I'm looking for you know the right title, the right keywords, description, tags, all of that stuff. So that's something that I do every time I make a video, especially if it's like a tutorial or something like that. There's there's the cat. This is the information that I think a lot of those other videos have been missing. I mean, sure, there are people out there who can come up with an idea and make a video about it and post it on YouTube, maybe tweet about it. And it's kind of an instant success. But for the majority of us, that's not the case. I mean, for me, I didn't really see any I didn't see any growth on YouTube, any success in my videos until I started doing what's called qualifying my ideas. So doing the keyword research and coming up with the titles that are optimized for search and putting those keywords in the description and all of that stuff is super important. So there's a lot of 
preparation in, in that aspect. That's not just, I came up with an idea, now I'm gonna make a video about it. I actually take the time before I ever film the video to see if it's something that people are searching for, to see if it's something that I might be able to have success with. And if it is, then I go through all that work and I create the title and the description and the tags and I maybe even make a thumbnail beforehand and then I save all of that stuff and that's when I'll put the video in my content calendar, which is just a, it's a calendar in Google Calendar. I don't use anything special. It's just, you know, I just put it in Google Calendar and then when it comes time to film it, I film it. Once I've actually qualified the idea and I know that it's something that could potentially be successful on my channel, that's when I start actually planning the video. I come up with a gear list. You know, what What am I gonna need in order to make this video? Am I gonna need a second person? Do I need a second cameraman? Do I need to maybe call up Michael Panetta and have him come down and help me shoot? Because he's done that quite a bit and I'm super grateful for that. I'll come up with shot lists or maybe even a full-blown storyboard. This is, this is the preparation. This is what's called pre-production everywhere else. So this is, this is where I do that. These tutorials take a lot of prep, actually. More prep than you might think. Like for this one specifically, I actually had to download and install Premiere Pro, which I've never done on this computer. I haven't actually worked in Premiere Pro for a really long time. So I gotta figure out how to do all that again. So we'll see how that goes. I also needed to put together a sequence that I'm gonna end up transferring over to DaVinci Resolve. And for that, I actually went to ArtGrid. You can see I've got some clips here, everything but this you know, iron worker and this boxer. So these, what is that, six clips right there? These are all in the sequence in Premiere Pro. And actually, if we come down and we switch over to Premiere Pro, you can see I've got the sequence all lined up and ready to go. I've already done some of the sound design and I've put some fade in and fade out and all of that stuff. So right now, I think we're actually ready to go and start making this tutorial. Now, to be honest, most of the videos I make are very, very simple. They're all done in the studio with just one camera, a couple lights and a microphone. So for lighting, I don't have much. I've got this, we got this LED light panel with a soft box on it. So go ahead and turn that on, turn that towards the camera that is really bright. And then over here, I've got another LED light panel that I use kind of like a hair light. I think it's more decoration than anything else. And then after that, we just kill these lights and now we're, we're ready to film. I've got a really simple setup here. There's just the camera right here. It's the only camera I own. I'm actually filming this on the phone right now. And then right here, I've got my DD V Mic D3 Pro, and that's pretty much it. I just do that, and I'm recording usually a screen recording uh, at the same time that I'm filming, and then I just sync it up and post, and and that's it. That's my filming setup. Pretty simple, really, really really simple. Hopefully it'll get a little bit more complicated by the end of this year. So after I've done all of that, after I've come up with the idea, I've qualified the idea, I've figured out everything that I'm gonna need in order to make the video, that's when I can actually film the thing. After I'm done filming, the next step is to actually review the footage. Now for something like a talking head video, like a tutorial, it's just a matter of making sure I didn't screw anything up too badly, making sure I actually have audio in the video, stuff like that. But for larger projects, where I'm out and I'm filming stuff and I got a bunch of handheld footage and stuff like that. I'm looking for shaky footage, underexposed footage, overexposed footage, and that is where today's sponsor comes in. Naive is a standalone software application that helps you quickly and easily find shaky and incorrectly exposed footage in your videos. Using Naive is simple. Just drop in your footage, verify your settings, and Naive will get to work finding that footage and separating it out into a separate video track. When it's all said and done, Naive will export an XML file that you can import into Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Final Cut and get to work fixing your footage. I've been using Naive for the past few months on some of my larger projects, and while there are a few bugs, the developers are hard at work working them out, and I think it is absolutely worth a try. So head over to naive.pro, sign up for a free account, and start fixing your footage today. Big shout out to Naive for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check them out after watching this video, there is a link in the description. But for now, let's get to editing. If you're new to the channel and you haven't figured it out by now, I edit in DaVinci Resolve. That's half my videos on my channel are about editing 
in DaVinci Resolve. I'm not gonna go through the entire edit, the entire workflow right now. Just a quick rundown. First thing I do is, you know, bring in the footage and cut it together. And then I'll do my color grading and then I'll do my audio and then I'll do any effects and stuff like that. And then after that, I, I export it and I review the video and if sometimes there's mistakes that I didn't catch when I was editing and so I'll have to go back and do that and sometimes I have to render three or four times before I actually get it right. Once I have the final version of the video, if I haven't done it already, I will create my thumbnail. I'll usually take a picture specifically for the thumbnail or I'll get something off of unsplash.com or something like that and edit it in Photoshop and export it and do all that stuff. And then it's time to upload to YouTube and that's fairly straightforward. I've already got my title, my description, my tag. So it's basically just copy and paste. And I usually upload about 24 hours before it's supposed to go public. And that way I have a chance to catch any mistakes, find out if it's gonna be demonetized for some reason and all of that stuff. And then once it's public, it's time to promote the thing. And there's a few different places where I do that. I usually post it on Patreon. So the people who are following me there will get that notification. I also have a mailing list. And so I'll create an email for my mailing list, letting them know that I've got a new video and I'll usually tweet it out. I know there's more that I can do. I try and tell people in my YouTube stories. I try and create a community post. There's probably more that I could do to promote it, but so far, you know, that's what I do and that's usually what works for me. And you'd think that it was done there, but it's really, it's really not. Like I'll promote it and all that stuff and then I keep an eye on the analytics and if it's not performing, maybe I'll change up the title or I'll change up the thumbnail, maybe change the description and I'll do all of that stuff, trying to give it another boost, maybe up that click-through rate, maybe up those views and maybe get this thing taking off. But word to the wise, if you're gonna do that, don't spend too much time on it. I mean, you wanna try and make the video perform well, but at the same time, there's something to be said for on to the next video. But that's my process. That's my whole video creation process. Everything from planning to promoting. I hope that it helped. I hope that it shed some light. If you're new to YouTube or new to creating videos in general, I hope this shed some light on some of the things that maybe you're not doing. Some of the steps that maybe you're skipping because you just didn't know that they were steps. If there's anything that really helped you, please let me know in the comments. I know that I skipped over a lot of the editing portion and I didn't go through the whole workflow. If you want to know my actual post-production workflow, check out this video right here. And for more videos on how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.